Well, the other one, um, on May 28th, I read that there's a Days of Camelot medieval fair, and yeah. I thought that sounded so fun. What's that? They've done that for a couple of years, and it's out of the fairgrounds, and um, they've got some great family passes. I think it's $30 for your family to go out and enjoy it, but they have jousting and fencing and the, the time pieces and the, um, the costumes. They've got vendors and food. It's just a nice family event to go to. And the calendar's got so many free activities or very low cost activities that, you know, it's, it's nice to take advantage of it. And we did the calendar because um, it used to be that you could go to St. George website and find out everything that was happening, but now it's the Santa Clara, it's Ivan's, it's St. George, it's Washington, which is great because we've gotten so large, but it's hard to find the activities and what's happening. Mm -hmm. So we threw everything into one spot and make it easy and convenient. But um, the Days of Camelot, this is an amazing organization, an amazing event. So yeah, it's, it's um, May 28th through the 31st. Well, I'm planning on going to this one. Yeah. And where can we find all of this information online, first of all? I know you've got a website. We do. Um, you can look at the magazines online every month at www.southernutahfamilyandkids.com. Mm -hmm. The magazines are free to pick up in about 250 locations everywhere throughout town. Um, we're in Fredonia, Kanab, Enterprise, down in Beaver Dam, Mesquite. Um, we also mail it out free. We don't mass mail it out to mm -hmm. everyone in the, the town just because we get a lot of stuff in our mail. And I don't want to have to paper everyone with things they don't necessarily want. But if people want it home delivered, great. You, know, you can just shoot you an email and you'll an get email. it right to your house. Yeah. Well, I don't know why I haven't been doing that, because I drive around and try and pick it up. <laughs> well, that is so wonderful. I thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. I love the magazine. We pick it up all the time. Now I'm going to get it delivered to my house. <laughs> but I had to say, right now, we are going to shoot to an interview that we did a little bit earlier on in the week. We had a strong man. His name's Ryan Malin on the show. And I brought this to show, and you'll see in just a second, he actually rolled this up with his bare hands, and I've been trying to even budget since then. Even just a little bit, I can't get it to move. So stay tuned. You've got to see it and hear about the events that he has coming up. Facing your future without a four-year degree is like performing a symphony with half an instrument. <laughs> At Dixie State College of Utah, we supply the missing pieces. Right now, we're going to talk to Ryan Malin, mm -hmm. local strongman, uh, competed just recently in the strongman competition in Huntington Beach. And he was just featured in Today in Dixie. They, they did a big article on him. No pun intended. Yes. <laughs> they, had, they, had, they had a picture of him. In fact, you, you brought your semi-truck right here, Aaron. I did. I brought my semi-truck because Ryan told me that in the strongman competition, he actually pulls a semi-truck. So I found this full, one. I figured maybe he could pull it. Full size. So get the, get the, oh. if you didn't see the picture, it's pretty impressive. But tell us about, Ryan, tell us about some of the things that you did in Huntington Beach. Um, for, tell us about some of the some of the uh, uh, events. Well, I did uh, with the Huntington Beach. They had a truck pull, yeah, and a forty thousand pound truck. They had the Atlas Stones, where it started out as three hundred pounds, three fifty, three seventy five, <laughs> and four hundred pounds. Okay. Hey, wait for me though. What's an Atlas Stone? I have no clue. Atlas Stone. They're those. It's a big solid cement ball. Okay, and what do you do with an Atlas stone? You pick it up off of the ground and you put it onto the platform. Like a boulder, cool. like a big round boulder. Yeah, yeah like basically. In, uh, like in Indiana Jones. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so you pick that up and then so you, you compete in all those events. You lift all those mm -hmm. heavy things mm -hmm. and pull a truck. And well, we had the keg toss too. That one, uh, I actually took a third in that one overall, so. Really? <laughs> <laughs> wow. the keg, and so how heavy is a keg? Roughly about 70 pounds. Ooh. And it was 20 feet. You just throw it up over a, a, a wall 20 feet up, so. 70 pounds, Aaron, that's about what you weigh. He could throw you. Oh, stop. Nice. I knew I liked nice. you. I redeemed myself from last time. <laughs> we had some weight issues. <laughs> that's, that's why I keep you around. Definitely put, <laughs> put my foot in my mouth on that one. But anyway, um, the other thing we're going to talk to, we'd like to talk to you about is uh, now, well, a couple things. First of all, you were injured. A little bit. You injured your, your bicep and you're in the process of healing. 
people that are just getting back into a lot of people in town and around uh, St. George and probably everywhere getting in shape for summer, working out a little too hard, they get a little too overzealous at first and they have to you know, go through a healing process. So first of all, tell us about what you're doing right now to, to heal from your last competition and then on a more like everyday level, what can people do to sort of avoid injury? Well, you know, the biggest thing is to start out, you, you stretch. Mm. Stretching's a huge one. If you're not uh, warmed up, I mean, we spend at least probably 45 minutes warming up just before, you know, we do the competition. Right. And when it comes to the recovery, I mean, your nutrition's huge, big. If you're not taking adequate protein, if you don't have enough, you know, of your glutamine, that type of stuff in your system, your body's not going to repair. So you continually, when you work out, you break it down and you don't repair it. Because that's, that's the, the myth that sometimes we, that I fall into anyway, is I think I, if I work out a lot and just eat whatever I want, it's fine because I'm working out. But it's not about just burning calories, it's about eating proper things that help your body heal and grow and stay in shape, not just eat whatever you want and just go burn a bunch of calories at the gym. Would, is, yeah, yeah, I mean, it is, it's what type of calories are you getting in? Well, and speaking of that, you have a line of products, like supplement products, is that correct? Mm -hmm. I'm actually, I just started, it's uh, my own RTD. It's just, it's a protein drink you take. Wait, wait, what's RTD? It's ready to drink. Oh, okay. So it's just one of those, you know, you see them in the gas station, that type of stuff. Oh, just ready to drink. Oh, okay, yep. all right. Yep, so it's not the powdered stuff that doesn't taste the best. Yeah, 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 definitely. But. I have had a question. I think about this a lot. I'm like, okay, strongman competitions. You're a little kid wandering around out there and you see that on TV and you think, I want to be a strongman. How do you even get started in something like that? How do you train? How do you even, you know, know where to go? You know, when I started out, it was, I wrestled in high school. I played a little bit of football. I loved working out. I did bodybuilding. And so I was, I was always working out, building into it. But with Strongman, you actually need to use, you train with some of the equipment that you're actually going to use. And that, I, you know, I made a couple phone calls and I ran into uh, my coach, my mentor, uh, Van Hatfield, who's, he's helped me with a lot of this stuff, especially uh, when it comes to technique. Uh, he has all the implements. So I mean, you, you found something that you really like uh, loved and just stuck with it, something mm -hmm. you were passionate about. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and uh, obviously you've been very successful. But, this, and this is the next thing too, we, and we just learned this about you. So you do the strong, but you also, you're, you're going out and you're, you're uh, you're, you're intimidating, <laughs> um, troubled youth. That's something was, you can do when you're huge. <laughs> I was, I was trying to think of a nice way to put it, but you, you help it. You're helping, you're helping troubled youth. Then mm -hmm. tell us about that. Well, uh, when parents have issues with their kids, and it's kind of intervention basically before they get into, you know having to deal with the police and some of that stuff, they actually uh, look. They want to send their kid to a boarding school. And obviously they would not go with their parents, so they call me and my partner and we come and make sure they go. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 What's whoa, whoa, the, whoa. Uh, I gotta know. You walk in the door and what? Are you trying to like scare them? Are you trying to look mean and scary? I have this vision in my head of just like, Ugh. Do I look that mean and intimidating? Is that? <laughs> I want to know what you do right when you walk in. Well, when we walk in, it's normally about three in the morning. Ooh. And so the kids asleep. Really? We, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. They drag them out of bed. <laughs> okay, wait. Well, what's the program called? This is a. Um, I I work for Transport Teens. Okay, that's what. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you go in at three a.m. and you get these kids out of their bed and. They... Well, their parents will go in and say, introduce us. Uh, my job, I fill up the door frame so they cannot run. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> The parent leaves, and then we just tell them, all right, this is what we're doing, and you know, we're just here to do a job, so just cooperate, I no problem. I could have used some of that when I, when I was a youth. In fact, maybe even recently, I got in a little bit of trouble. I'm, I'm better now. Mom, I'm fine, thank you very much. But wow, so then tell, me about the, tell us about really quickly about the success rate. This works then? Well, you know, I enjoy it because it makes a big difference for uh, you know, a lot of the kids end up working for these programs after because it really turns around. I mean, I've seen, I've had a couple people that I know 